Modern fashion is in a crazy state. Consumers are less educated on quality, which has allowed luxury brands to sell subpar products for inflated prices. In 2018, Balenciaga moved the production of the Triple S from Italy to China. Representatives of the brand said that China had the capacity to produce lighter shoes as the reason why they moved production to China. This was a horrible line of reasoning that was essentially an admission of using cheaper materials despite since then increasing the price of the Triple S sneakers. Customers who own pairs that were produced in Italy and in China have stated that the Italy produced pairs are of a way higher quality than the China ones. Yet, in a wider sense, no one questions these decisions made by luxury brands and consumers continue to mindlessly consume their products. In this four part interview series, I speak to fashion designers to unpack this issue and to get to the bottom of what good quality actually means in fashion. In this episode, I speak to Yaku Stapleton. Yaku studied fashion design at Leeds Beckett University, where he attained first class honours. He then went on to attain a master's degree at Central St. Martins, where he studied fashion menswear design as a British Fashion Council scholar. His Central St. Martins graduate collection, inspired by his family members and the online game RuneScape, won the prestigious L'Oreal Prize, which was judged by Ibrahim Kamara, the current editor in chief of Dazed Magazine, as well as the artistic director of Off-White. I went to his studio in Tottenham, London to find out what fabrics he thinks are high quality and to have a closer look at his graduate collection. Um... <laughs> you don't know who you are? Um, yeah, yeah, I know I am. I'm Yaku Stapleton and I'm a designer. Uh, fashion designer from St Albans but I'm based in London. I did my BA in Leeds at Leeds Beckett University um, after switching from geography. Uh, my BA collection was mainly quite sculptural based around perception and the changing of scale of different forms that I found interesting. Uh, and then from there I got the opportunity to go to Central St Martins um, on a scholarship from the British Fashion Council. So that's what I've been doing for the last 18 months. Um, whilst I've been at St Martins, it's kind of been a progression of my way of thinking and kind of getting deeper into the personal side of my design. Um, and through that, I've got funding from LVMH as well as uh, doing some work with Canada Goose, which was like a kind of in-house collaboration project. And then the MA show, which was in February, where I guess it was a collection where I got deeper into how I feel and like my view of the world and what things could be. Um, and I guess the collection did it did pretty good. I was really happy with it. I think it was like a good balance between like the fantasy and like theatre side of things and also like wearability and actual functionality within garments, which are two things that are quite important to me. Um, and it was, I think it was quite well received. I got the L'Oreal Design Award, L'Oreal Creative Award um, for that, which was really cool. That was judged by Ib Kamara. Um, and then now I'm in the studio, um, just working on different jobs and trying to work on like a little summer collection. Nice, nice. So um, let's start with quality, because um, obviously in fashion now, a lot of people buy things without knowing what good quality mm -hmm. garments are, what bad quality garments are. From your perspective, what would you say is a good quality garment or what do you look for in terms of quality when dealing with... I think there's probably three, call them pillars. Pillars is what comes to mind, but they're not like, I don't think it's that sturdy. But three things that I think are important that come to mind now. I think the first is 
I think they're all based around time. So the first is probably like the design of the clothes. So how much thought has gone into how it looks aesthetically. So like the feeling it gives, the cut of it, like all these, th all these different changes mean that there's probably some level of design to it, which I think then in turn gives like a level of aesthetic quality um, purely based on how things look. Then beyond that, I think, is the actual materials that go into it. Um, and I think there's kind of quality on different levels. So you could have, you could have like a dead stock fabric from a really, from like a LVMH house, for example, and it'll probably be like a high quality fabric um, that's like reasonably sustainable because it's dead stock. But then you could also make something from kind of like rubbish or like waste and achieve, you could achieve something that looks the same but maybe the actual quality of the fabric's not the same, so like it technically is lower quality. Um, but that kind of brings me on to the last point, which I'd say is like the actual, the ethics of it. So who's making it, how it's being made, and like what exactly it's made from, because I think all these things can indicate like a level of quality. So say we speak about the dead stock garment, a t-shirt made, from dead stock fabric. The fabric's quality, the way it's made could be quality depending on who's making it, if it's made in-house. But then there's still like, the ethics of it is still a dead stock fabric, so it's not like the max, it's not complete waste, it's kind of like a byproduct. So say to me, if it was a t-shirt or a garment that's like a top made from second hand, or waste material and it's been turned into this new object which fits within t-shirt. To me that's higher quality because of the ethical, the, eth the ethics, the quality of the ethics in that piece of clothing is like superiorly higher to anything else and that kind of, that has a value to it as well. I guess the low quality would be when it's, there's no ethics when it comes to making it so the person who's made it isn't correctly compensated or it's made externally with no real consideration for who's making it externally. The fabric would have to be kind of just any fabric that's kind of quickly made, quickly turned around with no real longevity to it. Um, and then just, I guess, no time put into the actual design of the garment too. That way it's kind of not got any of those pillars as such um, also with secondhand stuff I feel like if it's garments made from secondhand I feel like if they've survived long enough to be able to turn into something new it's probably from an era where there was a lot more time put into the fabrics being made so there's a level of quality there too so sometimes the quality in a actual vintage pair of, I don't know, cargo pants or like a surplus army pant from that period of time, remaking it is going to last way longer than like a surplus now because the quality of it is a bit different. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what I think. It's, kind of, it's like a hard one. There's like different levels to it. But for me, the most important one usually comes to the ethics side of things because I think that's where you can kind of, if you're working with dead stock or even better second hand then you'd have you got to think a bit more about the design so it, it naturally comes it's quite hard to upcycle or rework something and not think about how you're going to do it like you have right. to think you can't unless you just print onto it but even that's pretty cool whereas all the other ones there could be slip-ups in my opinion yeah what are your um, favorite fabrics to use and why Ooh, duvets old like duvet filling I think being able to create volume so easily but so fluidly is really it kind of still mesmerizes me when I kind of when I'm in that process I like screen printing I didn't actually do any screen printing for this recent collection but I like the 
rawness of like just ink ink and like fabric and just like pulling it through the screen is really nice and kind of taking something that's quite simple and like adding so much energy to it i like that process and then i don't know what else there's a lot of nylon i like functionality if, if like a garment can give a feeling but also function as something else so nylons are typically kind of like waterproof but also they've got like a shine sometimes or they're quite lightweight so you can kind of play with that volume a lot more freely I'm trying to think what other fab materials anything i could find waste paper whilst it's around yeah anything anything that can kind of that that i can manipulate or change in a way that relates to what I'm researching but it's kind of like you kind of find a way to change everything there's only been there's just been one fabric where I couldn't change it and I don't know what the fabric is but it's like this weird PVC lining from a jacket but I couldn't I couldn't do anything to it it just stayed white and rubbery forever okay when it comes to actual construction of a garment mm -hmm. what's a well-made garment in your opinion so are there specific stitches that you look for? Does it have to be stitched a certain way? And for you to be like, okay, this was like made well, what do you look for? Is it the inner lining? Like what, what do you see in a garment that's like, okay, this is, was constructed properly? Lining's, lining's important. A lot of things aren't lined as such now because it it's adds so much time to fast processes. It makes them quite slow. Lining, I guess the quality of the fabric so like natural, like a lot of things will be, sometimes a blend is good, it like it fits the purpose, but sometimes things will be made to feel like a natural fabric or fiber or whatever you want to call it. But it's not, it's kind of made a bit more cheaply. Sometimes you like, you got to own it and find out. Like a lot of the things that last is like, you know, like jeans is something like, je you can get jeans from years ago and the construction is quite similar, but it's not always. Some, I feel like sometimes it's just down to like the actual fabrics that places are using, or like the time it's taken them to make. But it's hard to look. It's hard to like to establish that when you're looking at somewhere. Even just like pockets, like I'm quite lazy with my pockets. I do like patch pockets, but there's like on like a suit trouser, you usually have like a like a properly lined pocket, but. Some, like a lot of garments don't have that anymore. Or like the river facing too. What I'm asking is, um, obviously it's to get the audience to understand what high quality is, but let's say we're talking about footwear. Mm. There's like clear differences. So uh, let's say a sportswear company that makes a shoe that's glued together mm. versus a um, high quality shoe that gets sewn, the sole gets sewn. Yeah. To the, so that's a clear difference in that like quality, for example. Um, so are there like signifiers like that? with clothes you've got to turn the garment inside out and like there's like it should be clean and when i say that i mean like like the way it's finished on the inside should be should look as good as the outside so things being top stitched takes extra time so like a like it can be stitched together but then like the seam can be top stitched down which has adds more time to the process but it means that the garment has like two points of being secure. Um, cover stitching is important. That's like, you get it on t-shirts, but like on other, where's the cover stitch? Like this, I don't know if it can pick it up, but like it'll be on the bottom of it. Any t-shirt will be cover stitched at the bottom, but then on other garments, it could be cover stitched like all around the inside. So, them extra finishes. I think, yeah, the inside. Even looking at labelling, sometimes, like, when the labelling's, like, nice or there's care taken into every aspect of the clothing, it's usually a good indicator that, like, more time has gone into the making of it. And I guess, you can, like, trying to get understanding of the designer, if you can, but I guess it's, it's quite hard if it's kind of high street or, like, big brands. You don't really, it's hard to really, you know that it's coming from kind of quite a mass produced factory, but trying to buy, when you buy from people you kind of know, or like you know of, 
through friends of a friend you can kind of get a better understanding for how they make or you could ask them are there any fabrics that you would completely stay away from like for example a lot of people give polyester mm. a lot of hate but like in certain applications like sportswear yeah you can't get away from it mm -hmm. um so are there fabrics you personally that are just like a no-go for you i think if you if you want like a like peace of mind and to not be contributing to the problems that we already have I think being able to buy secondhand or upcycled, even editing things yourself by like tapering things yourself or just cutting it yourself, like clears my conscience. So I never like I never think so much about it because I just kind of try and just avoid buying things that's like brand brand new. I try and buy things that already exist, and then I laughed when you asked because like I. I bought a cashmere jumper once, brand new, and it just it was so uncomfortable. But like technically, that's a good <laughs> fabric. But like, I avoid cashmere because it's not comfortable. But I think just having like think like just thinking about what you're buying. Like I think people can buy things, but there's loads of stuff out there that already exists in the category of what they want. Like everything's got its downsides. Like cotton is really bad. Water, I could use a lot of water waste. But then a lot of the natural replacements have their downside within production, like there's a lot of like contamination of water and there's like some, even like, or, there's like organic cotton now, which has more regulation about how it's made. But then there's loopholes for that. Obviously polyester gets a bad rep because it's not natural, but then, I don't know, for example, dyeing or like sublimating onto polyester is like more, is a better process than dyeing natural fibers. Avoid what you can't, have complete clarity on how it's made and if you don't then you just got to accept i just have i'd have to just accept that like i could be i'm probably contributing to the bigger problem right. whereas like at least if something's secondhand or you know who's made it you can get a better understanding for what you're buying do you purchase luxury fashion personally as a designer i, I always wonder this because most designers don't Maybe because they feel like they can just make it themselves, so why spend all that money? Not really, but I do, like, every now and then I see things that is cool. Um, I don't really buy luxury fashion. I think I, I find it more interesting to buy from, like, I don't know, people that I just see on, like, Instagram, or, like, people that I meet, if they make something cool, like, it's nice feels nice to support them and also get something that's interesting back and also help like help them help them help me because i want to see what they do next so like buying it and then seeing like oh, what they're going to come with next it's quite a cool process to be part of i would though shoes i like like i like shoes but i haven't bought any in a while mm. but like i like mm. like they're not luxury but like the new balance Action Bronson shoes. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get them at the moment. But like that's a. It's not like a mass mass produced shoe. But like it's not. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know how they were made. Yeah. We have no idea about how they're being made. We have enough. All the, all the ideas we have is like bad ones. Yeah. The ones like unless someone's making the shoe. Here or maybe they show more of the process of them getting the shoe made. Mm. Um. Yeah, shoes is a shoes is a tricky one for my conscience. <laughs> <laughs> so this is something that I always bring up, but it's just good for a designer to talk about it. Mm -hmm. The fact that different fabrics have different grades. So a good example, for example, nylon is seen as, by some people, as like a fabric that isn't durable, is quite weak. Mm. But then when you think of the nylon that Prada uses, mm. they use the nylon fabric that was used for military tents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, could you sort of talk about how not every fabric is made equal? So just because it's 100% cotton, there's like different grades. Oh, that's a, yeah, just feel it. Yeah, feeling it. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I think feeling a fabric, feeling the weight. Sometimes if I'm not feeling self-conscious, like I'll try and like close my eyes and like feel it and like, see, like feel how it feels. And... I think you can get understanding for levels of quality by feeling different fabrics of the same grade. Because 
I think there is like actual grading systems for fabrics, but I think the best way is to actually like hold things so everyone, well not everyone, but like you could probably find a pair of like Levi's jeans, which is like decent denim. But then say you ever come across like I don't know like some Japanese salvage yeah, denim, yeah. like you feel that and it's got a different feeling to it and like you close your eyes and it feels different and it's like both of them are good but you can feel that maybe that like it's been made differently like maybe this is like a better yeah because the japanese denim what makes it better is it's woven tighter mm -hmm. and that makes the denim fabric more durable yeah and to one they got one like width it's crazy i watched a documentary about it um same with jerseys jerseys are like a good one because everyone's used to it. everyone's like worn like a tracksuit or a t-shirt so like it's a fabric that people are used to but when you feel different jerseys you can feel the level of quality and the weight and like how it's before you have even bought it and before you've worn it like just closing your eyes like weighing it like feeling it a bit like stretching it and seeing like even what happens like with a t-shirt like if you like kind of you know like you pull a t-shirt and like it just stays pulled forever. <laughs> Whereas like, obviously don't go in a shop and just start pulling the t-shirts, but like, you know, you can just like, you can tell that's, that's, that's how, that's how, cause I, I don't really know, I don't know much, yeah. really. I'm just kind of. Trick question, not trying to catch you up, but it's kind of a trick question. So I feel like the assumption is always that the heavier fabric, the better it is. Mm. I personally think that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. I think that, let's say cotton, mm. you can get some like 300 GSM cotton that's like really thick and really heavy and like you can tell it's high quality, but also that might not be the best fabric for all situations. Like for example, if you live in a hot country, <laughs> you're gonna have to seek something lighter that's yeah. also high quality. You can't be wearing a 300 GSM cotton tee. You're going to die of sweat mm -hmm. and then cotton doesn't sweat away the best so <laughs> kind of like that what's your understanding of like the light and heavy fabrics what light fabrics do you know that are known for also being high quality obviously you got silk but i know i personally never used silk why is that it's quite tricky to sew you gotta be quite skilled in the art of sewing sometimes it requires hand sewing as well which is, that's like, that's different gravy stuff. Like, you got to be really impressive. See, that's when, like, poly blend fabrics come in, or fabrics that are, like, made specifically for certain climates. But they work. I've, heard, I've, got, I've felt some bamboo fabrics, and they felt like, the, like they were quite lightweight, which at the time I didn't want. I wanted a heavier weight, but, like, the samples I felt was like quite light and obviously yeah. it's natural. So there's like bamboos, but like some, like a lot of the fabrics and replacement kind of things they're using for natural fibers, like fab, like bamboo, banana, I think. They got everything. Yeah. Then a lot of those fabrics are quite, like a lot lighter, which generally isn't what I'm usually looking for, but a lot of them are quite good. So I feel like the alternative cotton fabrics are quite high quality and because because they're some of them are relatively new they 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 haven't they have to make it in mm, good mm. quality so that's what that's why i'd look for that is like replacement fabrics for cottons yeah it's an interesting conversation because i feel like um a lot of people don't realize how much there is to knowing and yeah. learning what high quality clothing is it is quite complicated and yeah all. definitely because there's a there's like a there's like a factual there's people that it's their job to know and they can tell you like specific things but then as a consumer which is kind of a design but like i'm i'm a consumer i was a consumer first i feel like it's just like a like it's just like a feeling like a physical feeling and just like just looking at different things and comparing things and being maybe like being a bit like tighter about like what you spend your money on even if like you've got the money to spend being a bit like all right cool i'm gonna find the best version of what this is or like try and just read up it read up for like five minutes on like what exactly what does that mean when they say viscose like what is viscose and like googling it and be like okay that's what that is a bit more like techie about it yeah is what is what's helped me but i still don't i just i still don't really know anything but i feel like i feel like you can feel it if you really wanted to know you could go to like like a cheap 
fabric shop yeah. and feel the fabrics and then go to like a more expensive one. Now, pro- some of the fabrics will probably be the same, especially in London. A lot of these expensive ones have the same fabrics, but they're just priced up. But they've got other ones. <laughs> That's legit. Like the same one, it's the same one, same everything. But some of, them, they, some of them have like some fabrics where like it's, it's high quality, you can feel it. Um, holding up to the, it's coming to me now, holding it up to the light. Some things you should be able to see through, but then some things like you get an understanding of like, okay, you're, is this fabric meant to be translucent or is it just a low quality version of that fabric? So some nylons you want to be, you want to be translucent because it's part of the finish or how you want the jacket to look or the pant. But then sometimes it's like, you don't, you want it to, you don't want it to be see-through, you want it to be opaque. So maybe that's either lower quality or maybe it's not actually the right fabric. Yeah. It's a tricky one. I think just being meticulous and just thinking a bit. Yeah. Holding things, old garments, old garments are usually high quality. So if you can, like old, like vintage. Why old. is that though? Because isn't that a bit crazy for you to say that um, uh, old garments are high quality? Because what does that say about garments <laughs> that are made now? <laughs> They're not really made to last. Like they were made to last, but like back then, stuff was made to last. Like it was like, I feel like companies needed, they relied more on customer satisfaction and like retention and like people being able to trust them. It was like a trust thing. It's like, okay, I'm going to go back because my pants from them still work. So like, I need a jacket now. So I might as well get it from them because I could trust them. Whereas now as things are sold with different things outside of trust, like hype, um, influencers, media, whatever. It's like a different thing. Now it's like, why do you, now because of the general consumer doesn't need to trust if they're if they're only going to wear something for a year or like what's the trust once. yeah or once once to a year and like say you wear something once a month like 12 times 12 wears like what you don't really need to trust something like do you need to trust someone for these like for this t-shirt to work 12 times like probably not but then when you look at like these old if you want to be one of them guys like single stitch t-shirt guy but these single stitch t-shirts exist like they're still they, they're still here the print's perfect, maybe a little bit faded, but the print's faded. And these, there's some t-shirts like 50 years old and like they've gone through different owners and like they people like, it's sought after because it's got like this cultural value to it. And there's like a, there's still a, there's a hype to single stitch too. But I think people are just, it's just fascinating that this, these objects are that old and it's, and it's perfect, it works perfect. It's fine. Whereas now, like, I don't, I guess we'll find out, but now some some of these t-shirts it's like they're not they're not made with the same they're made quicker they're made faster and there's like there's some there's shortcuts to that it's got a kind of it ends up a bit mash who is to blame for the fact that the quality of garments is becoming less is it that consumers don't expect what people used to expect mm. or is it also you know companies have convinced us to expect less who, who is the problem? Why is the root cause of the problem? Because at the end of the day, we, we control. At the end of the day, we control what they give because we got to buy it. So when, I don't know, when a brand gets cancelled, it's like, it's like, that's it. Until they like uncancel themselves. But for that period, because no one's buying it, then they got to, either people got to leave or they got to rebrand or whatever. So there's a level of power to people. It has to be my. It has to be our fault. As a, as a consumer, what I decide to buy has an effect. Like it's a small amount, but well, it dictates the market. Basically. Yeah, what I decide to buy has power. I think as a designer, there's also a responsibility to have a level of transparency with how you're making, but also like like full process I think you don't have to show everything I know people like some people rightfully like to have like secrets but as a design as designers the kind of lack of transparency isn't great I guess it creates that facade that 
people buy into you. Like people are interested in like design and like runway shows and all this because like before you like no one was allowed to be there and now the doors are open so like everyone everyone's into fashion it's it's, it's the biggest thing but then i think that like we're still that facade that secrecy still flowing so people like don't know like what people don't know really what's going on but like they like but but like why should they cuz like everyone's not everyone, but like there's a lot of like secrecy and like just buy like buy this product because we said it's good. Yeah. And I like, don't think about anything else. <laughs> and that like that's from luxury houses, that's from then it goes to like fast fashion houses. But like everyone's just everyone's moving in silence. But people are mo- people are waking up, people wanna know what's going on, people are interested in the lifetime of a garment from before they've owned it. Some pieces from my MA collection that I think quite nice is this look was from this piece or two pieces from look three which was based on my sister so i quite like these protrusions that it's got on the back of the sleeve and then this sublimation fade print which was pretty hard to execute because all the pieces is different but it's quite nice and then it's got this gilet which has I like some top stitch detailing on the back, as well as these hidden pockets. Um, I just think it's really nice. It's quite like simple, but I like the simplicity of it. And then on the front of here, it's got that same fade through the pockets. So I quite like how simple it is, but how close it was to the character and like how I think this is probably the closest one to my sister in terms of the clothes representing the person. So I think this is quite nice. Um, and then on top of that, I quite like, this piece was good, which was, I guess like the final evolution from working on my BA stuff. So I'd already like established these shapes, but then for this collection, I kind of looked into, this is for my older brother. So I was just thinking about what would he look like as a character and what would like the texture be? So he's quite diverse and interesting as a person. So I tried to get that through the textile. Which is pretty nice. It's got these extra arms, which are also bags. So you can keep your belongings in there. Something like that. Um, and then I guess going back to the simplicity, this was a look, or this hoodie is from a look based on my brother-in-law who is like super bright character, like he's like electric. So I wanted to kind of get a textile and create a finish that kind of had that feeling. Um, And then it's like a two piece. So it's like a tracksuit basically, which went with some shoes, which did, I kind of a bit. So where the shoes? What shoes? Were they? The shoes are just. It's just. A, it's literally just a subversion of a, of a um, of an Air Force One. It's just these, but so these they're just essentially just a subversion of an Air Force One. I don't think there's like there's not there's nothing that poetic about it. Like the more I think about it, like you can kind of I can kind of create meanings as to like what's going on but i think when it just comes down to it it's like a really good silhouette and just by kind of changing it a little bit it's kind of become something quite special that i think people kind of resonate with a little bit but um they're not for sale i'm not selling nike why not oh, i'm yeah, not selling yeah, yeah. nike product all right <laughs> don't get into trouble legally <laughs> no 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 I, I like the editing of it it's like a concept shoe basically right um so that I guess that's a separate thing, but like loads of people were kind of asking, like, "Oh, can I buy this?" It's like, mm, no, no, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. Like, I don't. I don't want to sell. I don't like. I like bootlegs, but I don't really like fakes. And I don't know if this is really a bootleg or a fake. It's kind of just like an object right. that can be worn. Back to what you were saying was that it's the consumer. We can drop as does, as consumers. Yeah. So what I was saying was that. Why I think it's the consumer's fault is because I think businesses will only do what makes them money. So 
most businesses, for example, if they have an idea and they try it and consumers don't buy it, they end that business there because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, it's not making money. So I feel like if consumers expected a certain quality and companies could genuinely see that, okay, if we don't make clothes of a certain quality, people aren't mm. going to buy it, then it wouldn't be a thing. So I still always think that it always falls on consumers. But yeah. then there's also another part of it, like, can you blame consumers for not being educated? Like, does the responsibility of being educated about that stuff fall on consumers or not? Nah, yeah. Consumers at the end of the day decide what sells, but you can't. Can you blame people? Us as designers should need to explain more, for sure. There's a res- I think that's the two. As like young designers, established designers too, um, a lot of like I think a lot now are starting to try and explain more and explain what's going on and show processes and etc cetera, etc cetera, so that the consumers they have and also like potential other ones can see what's going into it and I guess in turn think like all oh, right maybe because I don't know about this brand maybe it's not so good but that's like takes time. Can you? I don't even think you can blame people. People don't have like time in the day. Like I, this is a luxury that I have to make clothes, talk about clothes, and like and then chill out with like a, like a couple hours a day. Like that's I got. It's a luxury to have the time to be learning about all this stuff and like closing my eyes, lifting fabric. Like, <laughs> like when we talk, like that's not normal. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's not normal. That's a luxury. So you can't blame like people that are like they're 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 they got things to do, and then like now it's Thursday, and they need something to wear for Saturday, so it needs to arrive Friday just in case it doesn't fit, and then they got to go out Saturday morning and get whatever they want to wear. So like, what? Where's the time in that that week to be like, oh, but what if like what about? (laughs) who's making this dress dress pants whatever like so that's a tricky one it's, it's yeah but then it, it I think it all goes back into education I think the main thing is like who do you blame because um, even like what you said like I think the concept of let's say people having to buy clothes to have an outfit for a certain day is rooted mm. in like companies convincing us that we need to buy more clothes True. rather than or being bullied into wearing something more than once. Yeah. Whereas, like, people should feel like they could wear the same dress they wore last week. They yeah. should be able to wear it this week. Yeah. Ideally, in an ideal world, but people will literally judge you for it. Which comes, yeah, that's just like a, that's, then that's like a society thing. But, like, it feels good to be like, oh, like, they're, it's them. They're, <laughs> they're controlling us. But, like, at some point, you got to be like, oh, like, I'm wearing the same, I'm going to wear the same cargoes for a year yeah and I would like I'll wear a pair of shorts when they're getting washed yeah and I'll just wait for them to dry but like it's a trick it is it's super tricky like we as people maybe should just I mean I think like out, like outfit repeating I, I think one. it should be normalised yeah it's normal like I mean, I, I think, wear the same shit all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's the crazy thing. Like you, say, you have like you, you have this mad show, and then the designer comes out, and that like everyone's like, oh, they're always in that sort of like, ra- like basic or normal fit. But they, they, that's their fit. They wear that same fit all year, and then it just happens to be the show that day. So they come out and they're like in paired Adidas superstars and jeans and white t-shirt, and it's like, oh, wow, what like? But like, it's, so it's kind of like I wish. I don't know, I wish, I don't know. Oh, it's a tricky one. I wish just people just like, just rock the same things more. Or try and find, maybe you don't need to buy, but this is another time thing, maybe you don't need to buy the, the like, the pristine, like, show shop version. Like, just make your own one. Like, edit your own, like, buy something that's similar and like, mm. cut it or distress it, put it in the sun, some diet like whatever and then like it's like your own but 
that's another time thing like do people have time for all this this is that's a the, that's the question though people don't know when their next meal is coming yeah I guess if you're in if you're into if you're into fashion then that's that something you can do because you've got time yeah to do that like you can thrift something instead of buy something next time and then you edit it and now you've got your own piece but that's like a that's a small amount of people in like the grand scheme of the world I don't know yeah. how I guess it's more of a gradual change of people just understanding climate crisis ethics of clothes etc etc